Good afternoon. We're back for another segment for 15 Minute Financial. Again, my name is Tiffany Brinkley. I am a Seattle-based financial professional and financial literacy educator. It is April and Financial Literacy Awareness Month, and it's important that despite the COVID-19 issues going on in our community, all of you guys have access to the literacy information that's gonna help you make the best choices for your financial future so that you can move forward and protect your families. And with that, I'm gonna read my disclaimer and we'll go ahead and get going. This segment is educational in nature, designed to share and encourage dialogue around financial concepts, news, strategies, and tips often disseminated by various media outlets or taught by industry educators. My goal is simply to provide you with the means to uplift your families. Whether you're professionals or business owners, you're likely seeking to protect your family, health, and wealth. Be responsible for your own financial enlightenment. Seriously, it's very important. You guys, you need to do your own research. Stay positive and keep an open mind. This presentation should not be construed as offering investment, tax, or legal advice. Consult with a trusted licensed financial professional for proper guidance with your personal uh, circumstances. Now with that, so Robert Kiyosaki, I used his quotes a few times that you probably have seen. Um, I really like the way that he presents the information uh, that he's learned throughout his experiences in building wealth. And here he says, it's not how much money you make, but it's how much money you keep, how hard it works for you and how many generations you keep it for. You guys listen to that? How many generations do you keep it for? Right. So that's something in our community that we've been struggling with for generations. Um, I mean, I've seen it in my own family and I've seen it in others where somebody will see, receive an inheritance, a hefty inheritance, something that could have set them up for generations beyond themselves. And they squander it within just a, a few short years. Right. And so, you, you know, we definitely want to be responsible for leaving behind a legacy of some sort to our heirs, but then we also need to make sure that it's structured in a way that they can handle that responsibility, given the likely amount of financial uh, literacy education that they've received for themselves. So an example would be, you know, if you passed away, you're likely to want to leave something for your children, maybe in the form of a life insurance policy or whatnot, but do you really want to leave them a half a million dollars when they're 18 or 19 years old? I mean... Maybe your kids are prepared for it, but I'll tell you, most of the kids in our communities would not be able to manage that kind of money and are likely to end up in a very dis disastrous situation because of uh, what ends up happening, right? You guys really need to understand what's going on right now. Um, I shared this presentation, or excuse me, I shared this slide earlier in the previous segment um, talking about the S&P 500 index at its various inflection points. And um, it's not necessarily just to scare you guys that, oh my God, the market's right now crashing and you're going to lose all your money. No, that's not what it's about. It's really to draw your attention to the fact that we are in a financial environment, likely most of us anyways, where we are growing our assets in a non-guaranteed type environment. And a non-guaranteed environment that has shown us um, some norms as far as cyclical patterns that you may be able to identify if you just go back in history and kind of see you know, where the support and resistance lines lie. Uh, go, again, this may not make any sense to you if you weren't really paying a whole lot of attention back in you know, a geometry class or um, back when you guys were supposed to be paying attention in your algebra classes, but some of that information that you were learning back in, in um, middle school, high school, and even college is actually useful when it comes to your investments, right? Just some basic information, basic know-how of kind of some of the things you might be able to see within this chart right here. But I do want to bring your attention back to March 24th, 2000, that first peak you see coming from the left side. If you guys notice, that's during the time of the dot com when, or excuse me, the dot bomb. There you go. <laughs> the dot bomb when we had that major crash uh, that many of us remember, at least from, you know, I'm going on 40 years old. A lot of people 
in my generation, we aren't familiar with any of the market movements before that where people lost a lot of money, but this is not the first time the market crashed. That's just from my recollection, right? Um, the next one after that was one that I actually lost money in, right? So um, by that time, I was working for a major Fortune um, 500 company, and they started laying people off in droves before the crash even happened. So they were laying people off, I believe, because most corporations that have been around for a very long time, they've got very smart people working for them and you're, they're aware when the, the tides are changing, okay? So they're gonna do things to help protect their own interests. And when you own a corporation, the interests are that of what? The shareholders, okay? And the shareholders are generally going to let the company know what their concerns are and what needs to happen. And um, in that case, if companies recognize that the economy is changing, that it's likely that people's buying habits are changing, the energy that's going on in our environment, right, in our economic environment is changing because you have to understand that stocks and bonds and the values thereof are a culmination of a whole bunch of different um, characteristics, right? And part of that is also human emotion, okay? Just like the money that you make, right, is just a physical manifestation of your energy, Okay, the market swings are also that manifestation of our emotions. So oftentimes, if you just kind of pay attention to what's going on, and I'm looking at this like as we, but if you're just paying attention to what's going on out in the community, um, you'll kind of get an idea that oh wow, you know the gas prices are really down. Like what is this about? Or oh my gosh, the store is having a whole bunch of sales. I wonder why they're having all these clearances. Like things will start happening before the market starts making its move. So I want you guys to really, really start paying attention from here on out. Because I've been watching, I had already kind of told my friends a few things to look out for and they were surprised when, lo and behold, those things started happening right before the market crashed, right? And um, I'm no, I'm not, I can't say that I'm any smarter than any other financial professional out there, no. You know, I have my own perspective on um, the things that people really should be looking at in their life and a lot of that draws from my own family experience uh, where, you know, like I said before, where I come from a family where, you know, people might have some health issues. And, and so I'm really sensitive about making sure that there are no burdens on my family if and when that time were to come about, right? And also why I really uh, believe in life insurance because I know too many families that were financially devastated when somebody in the family passed away too soon, right? Or even maybe even if they passed away when they were supposed to, they were not prepared for that event in their life, okay? So anyways, going back to this S&P 500 inflection points, it's just really important for you to know how are your assets doing at any given point in time, especially if they're in a not guaranteed environment. OK, um, you know, we are here in the United States. And one of the, the awesome parts about you being a United States citizen is that we have the opportunity to leverage the tax code. You have to remember, where do we live? Again, we live in the United States. This country was designed to be a capitalist society. So when you think about the tax codes that were released back in 1913, who were the people that designed those tax codes? Well, likely the people that were holding major offices in the government. And again, who were those people? Well, I'm sure you probably guessed them ethnically, but I will also tell you that they were very wealthy people. So do you think that they designed some of those tax codes to benefit themselves or to benefit the rest of us? Well, I won't give you the answer to that, but I will say go do your research. The tax codes I can tell you oftentimes will benefit those who have stepped out on a limb, taken a risk for themselves and are trying to build something, right? Entrepreneurs, the people out here that they say, you know, are building this country by implementing, implementing processes, implementing um, uh, businesses that employees can come into and utilize as a, way, a means to, you know, have a comfortable lifestyle in some cases. Uh, but that being said, there are a lot of costs to running this country, whether they are implied or not, whether they are agreed upon all of us or not. I don't even know who, who approved the stimulus plan, but I'm not gonna complain about the check coming. I just know that I need to leverage that money because guess, right, guess what? Um, things will come back down the pipe, okay? This is not free money. At the end of the day, somebody's got to pay for it. And who is that somebody? The government. Well, who's the government? Well, I hope you guessed that it's all of us, 
okay? Um, so if you pay attention to the right-hand side of this particular chart, you'll notice that there's a tax factor. It just really illustrates that if you were to earn a dollar and then took that dollar and doubled it 20 times, at the end of the 19th time into the 20th time, you now have over a million dollars. But now we have the IRS that comes in and they say, well, we want our fair share of the growth of that particular asset, that $1. And therefore, as it doubles, we will take our insert a percentage rate. I don't know what percentage rate you pay in taxes, but that's what they're gonna want from you every year on time, <laughs> right? And so if you were to do, let's say 33%, if you start off with that dollar, by the time you get all the way down to that 20th time, so much has been eaten away from that potential value that now you can kind of understand why I always say that taxation is one of the largest wealth killers. OK, um, our historical uh, marginal tax rate, the highest, you guys, the highest in this country for the wealthy, which I hope all of us are trying to build wealth here. Right. For the wealthy has been over 90 percent. OK, so could you imagine the government, you know, you, you make I don't know, let's say you made a million dollars and the government is coming to you to say, well, hey, here's a eight hundred thousand dollar tax bill. <laughs> right. I'm sure most of you would come unglued, but that's happened in our country before. Now, uh, matter of fact, your 401k, that's why it was designed, is because the wealthy were looking for a tax loophole, so that way they wouldn't have to be paying so much out in taxes when they could be storing that money, letting it grow, waiting for a lower tax rate environment to come about, and then they could take advantage of that, which is what's going on now. Okay. Um, now, for the lower income earners, as you can see, the, ta the nominal tax rate has not peaked above 25%. Well, great. Good for them, right? Good for people that are within that particular um, tax rate because obviously those are the people that can't really afford to have to give any more of their income up just to, sur to survive and to get access to some of these benefits that are out here uh, for us to utilize. Um, and I, I shared another quote by Albert Einstein that I came across and I thought that was pretty interesting. He says, the hardest thing to understand in the world is the income tax. Well, I'll tell you, I also struggle with that, but guess what? Uh, at the end of the day, it's you against them. <laughs> so it is what it is, right? All right. So um, one thing that I really like people to understand is that we are living in a fiat currency environment. OK, and all that means is that the dollars that you utilize every day to go buy the goods and services that you need to live and sustain your life is actually not worth, worth what you guys think it's worth, okay? I need you to go do your research on what money is and how it came about, and I'm sure we'll have future episodes and segments talk a little bit more about that, but at the end of the day, that note that you hold in your hand, that's actually debt, you guys. Um, so modern slaves are not in chains. You have to understand, they're in debt. We are all in debt. Our country is in debt, and we are all responsible for that debt. So as we're all out here enjoying you know, our life, uh, you know, enjoying this time off from work, if that's you know, what you're able to do right now, spend more time with your family, which is a beautiful thing. That's one thing that we struggle with in this country as well, is just spending quality time uh, with our families and with the people that we love. But we also have to understand where our financial fortitude is heading um, when the financial instruments that we use from day to day are not necessarily what we think they are. Okay, my, my father, a long time ago, he used to always tell me, Tiffany, you need to understand what money is. It's like a tool, it's like a hammer, it's like a fork. You just need to understand how to leverage it, how to use it appropriately. And I really appreciate my dad for constantly like kind of drilling it into my head that I, I really need to be thinking about being an entrepreneur and I really need to be thinking about how money really works so that way I can leverage all of that for my family. And I'm, I'm taking his, I'm heeding his warnings and I'm taking his advice and it's opened up a whole new world for me ever since then. Um, so, you know, you want to definitely make sure that you're taking advantage of protecting your assets, getting guarantees and growing your money. This is what I have a passion around. This is what I'm doing for my clients, right? I'm showing them how to protect their assets and not outlive their retirement through using annuities, right? I'm showing them how to take control and ownership for their retirement when they move from one job to the next. People don't realize if you leave your 401k or other retirement assets with the company, if something were to go bust with that company, you may no longer own those assets. Just go talk to somebody that used to work for uh, uh, Washington Mutual. Good example. Life insurance strategies. You know, I don't care um, how old you are. As soon as you learn about life insurance, you need to get that in place immediately. I know people who have lost um, children too soon. I know people who have lost a wife or a husband too soon. 
I, the devastation that's left behind from whether it's a child that passes away too soon, a, a parent that passes away too soon, or a business partner that passes away too soon, I've experienced it. In just the short amount of time I've been in this industry, I've experienced all of that um, through the eyes of my clients. And it's, it, it sucks when people don't have the proper plans in place to lighten that burden, right? You, you're always going to go through that um, depression and obviously the, the sadness in um, the morning. But at the end of the day, if the financial resources were there, that would have lessened that just that much more. A long-term care, huge conversation. One of my clients, she owns a couple of adult family homes. Her clients pay her $8,500 a month to stay there. So she's making good money, right? And the cool thing that it just just, it just um, really confirms to me that what I'm doing is the best thing for my clients is that she's putting away $5,000 a month with me so that way she's prepared for her own services. How many of us can afford to put away $5,000 a month to make sure that we can appropriately rest when it's time to do so, right? Um, not most of us, right? And by the way, this is a black woman and I love it, you know, to, to know that another sister is is preparing herself in that way. Um, college funds, doing it the way the wealthy do. I know I moved my children's assets from one strategy to another one that I set up for my clients because it just wasn't growing the right way and there were still risks in the market. So I, I wanted to remove the risk and just have the growth for my kids. Um, indexing accounts, again, I'm talking about the same strategies that I mentioned before, the executive bonus plan, estate planning. We all need to have a sound estate plan in place and also an advanced tax plan in place. We don't know where the future taxation of this country will go. Nobody has a crystal ball, but I will tell you that with the unfunded liabilities, all this money that they're releasing out to everybody in this country right now, the significant retirement crisis on our hands and these unfunded wars that we keep ending up in, we just cannot sustain any more expenses, you guys. We need to be prepared for what's going to come down this pipe, which is our fair share of all of these costs coming back to us. Likely, again, I'm not a tax professional, but I'm looking at hist history, right? Likely in the, the form of a taxation. So if you don't, if you're saving your money in the form of an investment vehicle or financial strategy where you will have unknown taxation levied against that asset after you get to the point where you want to start utilizing it, just know that the government will have the opportunity to tell you how much you owe them from that asset. So you need to be prepared and you need to make sure that you're utilizing the tax code in your favor legally, right? They legally allow you to do so and many of these programs you have to qualify for. So, um, you know, what's important to you and your family? Cash flow, right? Are you able to maintain the lifestyle that you currently have? And what if you want a better lifestyle? Can you get there? Uh, debt management, emergency fund. I've been telling my clients for years, minimum three to six months of your monthly expenses need to be put to the side. But definitely nine to 12 months, especially when we're looking at a market downturn and look where we're at now. You can ask anyone that sat down with me over the last you know, four, five, six years and everybody I've told this to and look at where we're at now in our economic cycle. We're, we're exactly where I've been really stressing to people to prepare for and um, you know, to, to restructure their asset base to withstand. Uh, properly protecting themselves and make sure that they're um, not worried about any loss of income or assets if someone were to pass away. Building that wealth. Outpace inflation, you guys. You can do it. Reduce those taxes. You can legally utilize the tax code to your benefit, right? Preserving that wealth to make sure you reduce taxation and build a family legacy. You don't, do you think the Trumps and the, and the Rockefellers and all these other people are not set up properly? You know, you have the opportunity to do the same thing that they do. The, idea, the thing is that you just don't know what you don't know, but being that someone's here telling you you have the opportunity and to have that conversation with the financial professional, you know, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. All right, well, that's it for our episodes of 15 Minute Financial here at Red Dot. I appreciate you guys. Black Dot. Black, oh, oops, sorry. I said Red Dot, where did that come from? <laughs> that's my favorite color, that's where it came from. Okay. All right, you guys, well, that's all I have for you for our segments of 15, 15 Minute Financial here at Black Dot. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you guys during Financial Literacy Awareness Month, which is obviously the month that I'm most passionate about because it gives me the opportunity to share with you the things that you guys all need to hear. But it's really up to you to take this information and go do something with it. Feel free to uh, reach back out uh, to me, have a conversation, maybe meet up for coffee when this COVID issue goes away. But until then, I'm on 
on Zoom, I'm on the phone, I'm via email. Feel free to reach out to me in any way that makes sense for you, and I look forward to hearing from you again. Take care.